Hello everyone and welcome to today's webinar, The Secret Ingredients to a Winning ABM Blueprint. I'm Brian Anderson, News Editor at Demand Gym Report, and I'll be your moderator for this presentation. Really appreciate everyone taking the time to join us today. Going to roll through a few housekeeping slides here. Uh, first, for those of you who may be new to Demand Gem Report, we are an online media company publishing daily news, a weekly email newsletter, special reports, uh, original research, and a plethora of additional resources. If you haven't done so already, uh, join our more than 50,000 uh, strong subscriber base um, by subscribing to our weekly newsletter today. We also host a premier live event in Scottsdale, Arizona every February called the B2B Marketing Exchange, which focuses on helping professionals improve B2B marketing and sales strategies and results. Rated the top B2B marketing conference by Forbes, B2BMX brings more than 1,000 marketers together every year for a three-day educational and networking event that includes more than 85 sessions throughout six topical tracks. You can learn more about this unique event and sign up for updates at b2bmarketing.exchange. We also invite you to become part of our online community of B2BM experts. Follow the link you see here on the right to check out our community where you can connect with like-minded professionals, join in B2B-focused conversations and initiatives, and even compete for some great prizes. We're also hosting a special sweepstakes throughout this week-long series where attendees can win a free ticket to our annual B2B Marketing Exchange, Starbucks gift cards, and even a $500 Expedia gift card. If you register for a BII event uh, webinar, you will automatically be entered for a chance to win. And if you attend any sessions live, you'll receive a second entry. We will be giving away one Starbucks gift card per session, one B2B MX ticket per day, and one grand prize uh, $500 Expedia gift card when the series ends. So be sure to attend all this week's sessions for your best chance to win. For today's presentation, we're using the On24 platform. During the presentation, you can access all the information you need from the platform toolbar. During and after today's presentation, please follow along and share your thoughts and feedback on Twitter and LinkedIn using the hashtag BII18. You'll also see that you can tweet from uh, directly within the On24 platform here using the Twitter widget on the left-hand side of your screen. We also encourage you to ask our presenter questions. To do so, simply click the Q&A widget at the top right corner of the screen here. Today's presentation is slated to run about 25 to 35 minutes with 10 to 15 minutes for Q&A following the session. You can submit your questions using this Q&A widget at any time. Today's presentation is being recorded and all attendees will receive an archive link to the presentation to go back and review or to even share with your colleagues. In addition to joining the conversation online and submitting your questions, we also welcome you to let us know how we're doing. In an effort to constantly improve the level of value we provide to our um, reader base and our attendees to these events, we put together a very brief survey that will automatically launch once this webinar session ends. You can also pull up, complete, and submit the survey at any time during this webinar by clicking on the survey icon circled here on the bottom of your screen. Before signing off today, please take a moment to complete this quick questionnaire. Doing so will help us better serve you in the future. Now I'm pleased to introduce our featured speaker for this session, Andre Yi. Andre is the CEO of Trivulo, Triblio. Sorry. He has numerous years of experience with an outstanding record of growing successful software companies. Most recently, he was the SVP of product development for Eloqua, responsible for overall product development and operations at the company. At Eloqua, he was part of the executive team responsible for leading the company to an IPO and a $957 million acquisition by Oracle. Prior to Eloqua, he was CEO of NFR Security, which he successfully led to growth 
and exit to Checkpoint Software. With that, I will pass it over to you, Andre. Take it away. Thanks, Brian. And uh, thanks, everyone, uh, for joining me on this session on secret ingredients to a winning ABM Blueprint. My name is Andre Yi. I'm the founder and CEO of Triblio. And uh, instead of a regular corporate photo and background there, I thought I'd give you a little snapshot of me at the beach with my wife. Uh, we have three kids not featured here. And we love the beach um, and um, love to spend as much time on the beach as we can. And if you follow me on Instagram, you'll see that not only do I love the beach, I love food. And that's actually what I end up posting on Instagram. Yeah, on Instagram. No, no political commentary, no marketing tips, just... Uh, good tasting food. Um, but on a more uh, relevant note, um, I was formerly senior VP of product development for Eloqua. I was part of the uh, leadership team that took the company from the early days of Eloqua to an IPO and eventual exit to Oracle. And I left Oracle after uh, some time to start Triblio because I believe that an account-based approach to demand generation was the next big thing for B2B marketing. And uh, we've been on this journey for the past four years, and it's been a lot of fun as we've grown the business. Just a couple of things about Triblio. Uh, we are a three-time Cody Award winner for Best Digital Marketing Platform. Uh, we're proud of that. We, have, uh, the, we believe the most complete platform for executing account-based marketing programs. Uh, but we're not just uh, really just proud of our uh, software we're especially proud of our customers. We have well over 100 customers, uh, ranging from uh, fast-growing SMBs to large enterprises. But truth be told, uh, uh, we don't have the most customers. We have well over 100 customers, as I mentioned. But we don't have the most customers, but we have the most successful customers. They uh, win awards. They uh, execute campaigns that impact their business, and we're proud of them and of the part that we play in their success. And so uh, for today, uh, what I'd like to do in today's session is, is really do two things. First, I want to share why B2B uh, demand generation is undergoing a radical transformation, in my opinion, to an account-based approach. And then I, I want to discuss the rules that shape this new transformed uh, uh, approach. And, and then uh, the second thing is this. As this transformation is taking place, there's a lot of confusion about how to make ABM work in the real world. And what I want to do is to share how some of our customers are implementing ABM programs that actually work and win awards. So let's get started. If you're a B2B marketer any time in the last 10 years, it's likely that you've used market, a marketing automation platform, whether it's Aliqua, HubSpot, Marketo, or uh, Salesforce Pardot. Um, and it's easy to lose sight of the fact that the reason marketing automation took hold, the reason it's been such a mainstream um, success story is because of the desire to impact revenue. 77% of CMOs indicate that growing revenue is the most compelling reason for marketing automation, right? And it's really important to remind ourselves of this because it's really not about hitting your MQL target. It's about revenue impact. Now, unfortunately, the problem, as every demand gen practitioner knows, is that more inquiries doesn't equal more revenue. The question is, what are the underlying issues behind this problem? Well, look no further than the MQL rejection rate. In a typical organization, sales rejects the vast majority of the MQLs that are generated. Here are the stats that back uh, that up. Aberdeen Research says 32%, only 32% of MQLs actually convert to, to an opportunity. Marketo put out some research saying that number is only 26%. If you go to serious positions, they say it's 22%. And uh, if you talk to Topo, 
uh, that number uh, they quote as 12%. When you take an average of that, that average is out to 23%. Right? Think about that. One out of four MQLs, only one out of four MQLs actually convert into pipeline opportunity. That batting average may be okay for baseball, but it's really unacceptable for demand generation. The problem is we've just become numb to this fact. Here's another problem. <clears throat> Buyer behavior has really changed in the last 10 years. We've really, through the use of marketing automation, we've really chained, uh, trained buyers to delay and sometimes avoid form registrations altogether. Buyers are increasingly delaying contact form registrations. We at Triblio conducted a data analysis study uh, from over 150,000 form registrations across all our customers. And one of the fundamental questions we asked was this. For the prospects that ended up filling out a form, how much earlier did they actually engage with the company? And here's what we found out. 45%, 45%, almost half of all the prospects engaged a buyer 90 days or more prior to filling out a contact form registration. That means that well ahead of filling out a contact form, they were checking out your content, they were learning about your company, they were learning about the market, and probably checking out your competition as well. Here's the real problem. Problem is that most companies have no ability to detect that initial engagement, much less act upon it. On top of that, Given that corporate executive board tells us that it takes 6.8 decision makers on average to sign up on a typical B2B purchase, we've also discovered this other fact. 85% of the buying group actually stays anonymous. Only 15% of the buying group actually raises their hand. 85% stay anonymous. In, in other words, they, they don't self-identify digitally to the seller. Why is this a problem? Well, all of this is a problem to the way B2B marketing is done today because marketing automation campaigns are triggered and sustained by contact form registrations. If buyers delay form registrations, you end up nurturing them late in the buying cycle. And ultimately what happens is your sales team is late to deals. Which is really what one marketing executive said to me. It's a, it's a long quote, but focus right in the middle of the quote, and you'll see that they talk about how by the time they get to the VP, the decision has long been made for a competitor. They're late to the deal when they focus on nurturing to an MQL. As marketers... What we need to do is understand the implications of this changing landscape and what that means to the way demand gen needs to be done in the future. We need to understand the new rules for revenue impact, and here they are. Here are the four new rules for revenue impact. Rule number one, identify and, in, and initiate buyer engagement without dependence on former res registrations. Instead of waiting for your prospect to fill out contact form registrations and identify that buyer interest earlier and initiate when activity indicates the propensity for that buyer to engage. Number two, activate sales on marketing qualified accounts instead of just, just uh, leads. What's implied in that is that you have to score based on account activity, not just lead activity. That's one of the fundamental problems with marketing automation today. What marketing automation platforms do today is that they score you essentially, they, they score a lead and they score primarily based on the response of the individual that received the email. What account-based marketing demands is that you score and activate sales on marketing qualified accounts, scoring based on the entire account activity. Number three, you want to supercharge SDRs as a nurturing channel. 
supercharged SDRs as a marketing channel. The days of long, the long nurture using traditional marketing automation is dead, or at least marginalized. Today, leading marketers are actually leveraging SDRs as a marketing channel for, nurture, for shorter nurture and more direct nurture, a one-to-one -one nurturing channel. And then finally, fourth rule for revenue impact, measure opportunity pipeline impact, not just MQLs. As I've spoken to more uh, and more chief executives and marketing executives, I see an increasing focus on measuring pipeline impact. Yes, they still want to track MQL numbers, but increasingly CEOs and CMOs are wanting to see and measure direct pipeline impact based on the marketing campaigns that they run. So measure pipeline impact, not just the MQLs. Now, let me share a few examples of how successful award-winning Trivio customers are doing that today. So the first rule for ABM success is this, identify and initiate customer engagement without dependence on contact form registrations. Clara Bridge is one of our customers, and they had a goal of doing exactly this. Just a little bit about them. They sell customer experience management software, and their tier one accounts are the larger companies with really long sales cycles, and they wanted to get ahead of the curve. They wanted to get to these buyers earlier, educate them, and build trust. And so they implemented Trivio to, to help them do that. They started by using account-based advertising to reach the right roles in those tier one accounts. They uploaded an account list with relevant roles and titles they wanted to reach, and these buyers were served relevant display ads to initiate interest. Now, when you do that, you will see a lift in in-target account traffic to your website. And they, did, they saw that exactly. They saw a significant lift in in-target account traffic to their website. What they did was provide a personalized on-site experience to engage those buyers. As they do that, they are also uh, scoring the account, and when these buyers demonstrated qualified behavior, the system would trigger a notification to their BDR team to begin outbounding activity. The SDRs and BDRs would then follow up based on information from uh, their accounts, um, information like uh, the frequency and recency of account engagement and the specific content that, that the buyer was responding to. This work, absolutely. This campaign converted into pipeline three times better than Clara Bridges' MQL baseline. It also directly influenced $24 million in revenue. The point here is this. Don't wait for contact form registrations in order to trigger your nurture campaign. Get ahead of the curve, identify and initiate the nurture based on account activity. The second rule for award-winning ABM is to move towards scoring and activating sales sales based on account activity, not just lead activity. One of our customers, Vision Critical, is a great example of this. Um, they score both on, offline and online act, uh, account activity, and they activate sales when these accounts become marketing qualified. It starts with fir uh, first with defining account tiers and aligning the appropriate program investment to each tier. And they, they used actually this worksheet that you see on the right-hand side of this slide. They used the worksheet shown here to, to do that planning. And, and by the way, if you want to get that worksheet, we'll, we'll provide it um, as part of the resource with this webinar. They followed up by building account scoring with marketing qualified thresholds that score both based on online activity as well as offline activity. Online activity like, you know, if a buyer a prospect watches a video or downloads a customer's uh, case study, that triggers uh, the account score and, and, and um, increases the account score. As well as offline activity, for instance, if, if um, a buyer that you're working on actually stops by your booth 
um, at a trade show and has a meaningful conversation or if one of their executives attend a VIP uh, event. Both online and uh, offline activity uh, figured into the account score. Why this, they also personalize the web experience for key verticals and regions to drive engagement and deeper content consumption and deeper engagement with the account. And then finally, the SDRs or BDRs would follow up based on information from the Account Insights dashboard. Just like I mentioned before, the frequency and recency of, of the account engagement, how many visitors came, whether those visitors are known or unknown, and most importantly, what were the topics or content uh, items that they were most interested in. The result is an entire marketing and sales organization with a shared focus working together to engage accounts that look like buyers, that show the behavior, uh, uh, buying behavior, um, and, and earlier, even before that lead ha has been fully qualified as an MQL, because you're not sitting back waiting for this lead to fill out a form. They're actually proactively scoring the entire account activity. The third rule for ABM success, leverage your SDRs as a marketing channel. The headline here, as I mentioned before, the days of doing the long nurture, the kind that you, you do with traditional marketing automation platforms like Alico, Marketo, HubSpot, is, is dead or, or at the very least marginalized. The new nurture is shorter. It's based on one-to-one -one outreach with SDRs and, or VDRs, and no company gets this more and Financial Force, one of our top customers. Now, their story is particularly interesting because it actually starts with a misstep. And this is something that they've actually shared in conferences. Um, it started with a direct mail campaign um, uh, and doing what I think most uh, direct mail campaigns are, uh, most marketers do with direct mail campaigns. They send a direct mail piece uh, to a target list with a premium offer. In this case, I think it was uh, Amazon. Um, Echo, and then they ended up handing that list over, throwing the list over to the transom to the SDRs for follow-up. And guess what? It didn't work great. And that's primarily because of the discontinuity between the marketing campaign and the SDR outreach. Now, to their credit, they reworked the campaign with a mindset to treat the SDRs like a marketing channel. They send the same direct uh, mail piece. They positioned it not as uh, positioned it as a gift, not as a ransom note, as they described a previous offer. So they did change up the offer a little bit. But more importantly, I think they designed the actual follow-up cadence with specific uh, via the SDRs uh, with specific messaging and content. In other words, they treated the SDR outreach as 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 part of the continuity of the, the marketing program. And then they ended up also nurturing those accounts on site with personalized pages to expand the buying group interest. The risk a more effective campaign. They ended up boosting pipeline by several million dollars. And uh, more importantly, um, they now have honed this so that this is part of the standard process for uh, ABM campaigns at Financial Force. They, they crack the code, they figured out what works, and, and they're just scaling that. Finally, ABM success rule number four, measure pipeline impact, not just MQLs. This isn't the only thing you should measure when it comes to account-based marketing, but I think it's the most important thing, right? More specifically, I believe you should measure in-target pipeline growth, and you should do that in two ways. The first is this. The first question you should be asking yourself is this. Are you achieving your in-target account opportunity goals? In other words, um, are you hitting your goals for pipeline contribution from your in-target accounts? And then secondly, are in-target account opportunities a growing and increasing percentage of the overall pipeline? 
You know, the first has to do with sheer volume. Are you just getting enough opportunities? Are you living up to the commitments that you've made in terms of uh, in-target account opportunity commitments to the company, right? But the second actually speaks to efficiency. Over a period of time, what you should see is that in-target account opportunities is an increasing percentage of your overall pipeline. Right? You should be uh, doing a better and better job defining what an in-target account opportunity um, should look like, and it should take up a bigger proportion of your overall pipeline. So the bottom line here is start measuring pipeline impact, not just MQLs. Now let's finish up by reminding you of the few four new rules for revenue impact. First, identify and, and initiate buyer engagement without a dependence on contact form registration. Two, Activate sales on marketing qualified accounts, not just leads. Three, supercharge your SDR team as a marketing channel for nurturing. And then four, finally, measure pipeline impact, not just MQLs. Well, thanks for spending time with me today. And if you only remember one thing, remember it's about revenue impact and you can significantly impact revenue in your company over the next 12 months. Just apply these four new rules and get started. Thank you for that. Uh, uh presentation, Andrew, that uh, presentation went very well, and it sparked some really uh, great questions. Before I get to those, I'd like to remind everyone once again to uh, please share your thoughts and feedback with us before logging off today. You can do so by clicking on the survey icon, which you can see uh, at the bottom of your screen. The survey will also automatically launch uh, when this session ends. So let's hop in uh, right into these questions here, Andre. The first one we have is from Amy. Amy uh, asks, uh, what should be the first thing um, she should do when starting off with ABM in her business? Um, yeah, that, that's a really good question. Um, you know, uh, there are a number of things that are typically re recommended uh, when you get started with ABM. You know, some people would say, uh, build out, obviously build out your target account list as your first thing. The other, uh, you know, sometimes people say, you know, first thing is really map your leads to the right account owners and do that kind of thing. One of the things we like to say sometimes is, you know, the first thing you should do is benchmark, right? Uh, you want to benchmark your target account engagement. In other words, you know, do you even know what percentage of your target accounts are even engaging with your content on your website? Um, you want to uh, take a read on what is the breakdown of uh, the website engagement by account type, by size of the account, by industry, you may be surprised what you will learn through that process. Typically, I'd say it will surface for you sort of hidden insights about who's engaging with you right now and how to guide your next steps, right? So, for instance, you know, you may have a target account list of the top 200 accounts, and what you may find out is, man, oh, you know, uh, a very small percentage, like only 5% of those t target accounts are even engaging with me on on my website. So, um, you know, first uh, order is, you know, get them to engage with you. So, so um, that benchmarking is really important first step. And, and if you're interested, let us know uh, because for webinar attendees, you know, we will uh, provide a benchmark report for you for free. So um, certainly feel free to contact us and, and um, let us know. Great. Thanks for that. That makes a lot of sense. So the next question we have is uh, from Richard. Richard, has a question regarding uh, the SDR rule uh, within uh, businesses. He's asking where necessarily should the BDR or SDR role sit within a company? Should it be under the marketing department? Should it be under the sales department? A mix of both. What, what would you suggest? Yeah, uh, that's also another good question and, and one that is, uh, I would say, widely discussed topic uh, you know, recently. Um, two years ago, what I is, would typically see among our customer base and partners and, is that uh, two-thirds 
uh, of, of um, uh, customers would rep- would have the SDR BDR function reside under sales. What we've seen with you know with interest is with great interest is that over the past year or so we've seen a shift to more of a 50-50 split, where increasingly and I would say more of the momentum is putting the BDR under the marketing department. And you know there are advantages and disadvantages to to this to this switch. I mean. If you put it under marketing, you're going to get better campaign coordination. You, you have the opportunity to treat your SDRs as a channel uh, and, and really uh, uh, sort of um, kind of um, extend your campaign through the SDR channel. And I think, as, as we talked about in, in the webinar, it will create better outcomes uh, from a pipeline influence or even demand gen perspective. The disadvantage when you, uh, you know, when you take it away from sales is that SDRs are typically the first step for someone, you know, early in their career getting into a senior sales role. And so it's typically, you know, been a great training ground for sales. And, you know, so, you know, for the, for the sales, uh, for the SDR, they may feel like they lose somewhat of that connection for so upward mobility in their career. And so that's the downside and you have to manage to that. So, you know, um, I think overall, um, the shift to, uh, to more, uh, rep- the shift to, you know, uh, more increased, uh, reporting into marketing is, is a good, good thing. I would agree there. Yeah, thanks for that. Next question we have is from Sarah. Sarah is asking, how important is a multi-channel strategy to a successful ABM program? I'm really glad Sarah asked this question because I I, I would say, you know, we don't talk about it very often uh, when we talk about ABM, and and I think it's, 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 uh, I'll just say this, it's very important. to um, uh, multi-channel strategy is very important to ABM. I'm not sure you can uh, sustainably, be, you can be sustainably successful with ABM programs without a truly cohesive multi-channel approach. Um, and by that I mean it's really important not just to message and, and reach your buyers in, through multiple channels, but it's important to connect the dots between the channels. It's actually what we emphasize to our customers, right? So, uh, for example, connecting your dots between your display ad channel and your on-site uh, engagement is very important. Here's the reason why. What we've seen is that when customers execute account-based uh, display ads, you uh, you will typically see a lift in in-target traffic to your website anywhere from 30% to over 300%, which is fantastic. But um, you want to make sure you personalize the on-site experience to capture the the account visitor's attention and engagement, and you want to do that by making sure that when those account visitors come, they see the, a relevant message, they see relevant content uh, that um, that will deepen their engagement. And um, and and then so that that's an example. Another example is, of course, I mentioned treating the SDRs as a marketing channel and connecting. So connecting the dots between ads website and the actual sales follow-up cadence is is important. And I think I covered that a little bit when we talked about financial force. Um, it's a game changer, right, because it, it actually ensures that the money you put into the uh, direct mail campaigns will pay out in terms of getting the outcomes you want. So, um, so yeah, highly important. Definitely. Great. Thanks for that. Unfortunately, we do not have uh, m- any time for uh, for further questions. However, if your questions did go unanswered, we will be sure uh, to have uh, uh, Andre and his team uh, follow up with uh, you folks, and our team will follow up with you to make sure that your questions get answered. So. With that, I want to say thanks again uh, to Andre and, and Triblio, and thank you for everyone uh, joining us today for such a great session. Um, please be sure to join us for our next session uh, titled How to Harness Data and Analytics to Execute and Report on Account Intelligence, which will take place later today at 2 p.m. Eastern. It's definitely one that... Uh, you don't want to miss. So uh, thanks again for everyone joining us today and have a great rest of the day.